Four Nights of the Apocalypse Chapter 78 is out, and I have to say, another really, really good chapter. This chapter was just all hype, and I'm just really happy that I had the chance to read this. I'm just, I'm honestly just gonna say this did not go how I expected it with how it was ending, but the entire chapter all throughout, it made me smile with how, how awesome it was. I laughed a little bit. And I got concerned for one of the other characters in terms of their well-being. And I've, I'm just going to stop saying this right now. Let's just get right. Let's just hit that intro and go right into the review. I just can't stop myself. Chapter 78 of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse, titled A King's Pride. And I gotta say, I like this cover image of Meliodas and Tristan, with the caption being, do they stand back to back out of trust or opposition? So, honestly, like, if you take the ending of the Seven Daily Sins manga with the final chapter and how Tristan acts towards Meliodas, I can see that it's possible that he opposes his father on certain aspects and also respects him. It's a nice tease to the differences between the two, between father and son. But anyway, to what we've all been waiting for. Meliodas and Arthur facing off. We start off after Meliodas' declaration last week to knock Arthur back into his senses. But after hearing that, Arthur just laughs. Bring me back to my senses. It's because I came to my senses that I'm standing off with you like this. A world where humans and other races coexist is an empty dream. I will put this world back into the hands of humankind. So, yeah, something definitely happened to give Arthur this type of epiphany, or, well, I wanted to exactly call it epiphany. Something clearly happened to Arthur over the last 16 years that gave him this mentality over the dream that he and Meliodas once shared. So, I'm curious to see what that was. People are saying that it might be Kath manipulating him, but I don't want that. I mean, it'd be, it's a fun idea that, Kath's, that Kath would kind of, like, negatively affect him mentally, but I feel like Arthur, at the end of Seven of Sins, was a mentally sound character regardless, and had a very strong will, so I doubt Kath's personality will be a whole factor in that. But I'll get into my thoughts on that when, I, when this arc eventually ends, and I make a video about Arthur with how things could play out in this arc. But anyway, back into the ground, Tristan is trying to tell Meliodas, we're wasting time, I am going to take him on myself as Meliodas is nonchalantly just stretching how he usually does when he doesn't take a situation seriously, tells Tristan to stay there, as in the very next panel, Tristan is just, what the heck, as Meliodas just bolts away as he disappears. This is a panel that literally makes me laugh, because this is something that is just classic Meliodas. He acts nonchalant at first, and right when he goes, goes like, full beast mode to try and take down his opponent for an actual fight, he'll just zoom past everyone in the blink of an eye, shocking everyone. Tristan's dumbfounded face just makes me laugh in this situation. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, the next page is literally Meliodas in that instance, literally face to face within swinging distance of Arthur, as even Arthur is pretty shocked by the speed of Meliodas. Meliodas makes a huge slash, breaking apart the stairs, that Arthur was on, and Arthur did manage to pull his sword and use it to block the blow, not being injured. Meliodas begins to continue with a barrage of slashes as Arthur continues to block them. As we see a panel leaving with the aftermath of some of the slashes going towards a mountain, and boom, completely shattering and evaporating the entire mountain. So that is a huge scale of Meliodas' overall strength. I, I think we all kind of assume that Meliodas wasn't just sitting on his ass for the past 16 years, especially since he's a demon and he could literally live for a long time. So I assume he tried to get himself stronger to protect Leonis and everyone, especially if he started to figure out that Arthur was slowly losing it. And since he made a promise to Arthur that if he lost his way, him and the Sendilly Sins would go and help him, so it makes sense that Meliodas would get stronger for that very possibility. And this isn't even Meliodas using his demon powers, it's just his base form right now, obliterating a mountain with ease, seemingly. And I just love Percival and Nazian's reaction that they destroyed uh, the mountain. Donnie's like, this is a freaking catastrophe. And Dreyfus, taking command, tells all the knights, don't get in Meliodas' way. 
get the hell out of there. Because, yeah, Dreyfus, Hendrickson, the Seeger Knights know when Meliodas is going to go all out, you don't want to be anywhere near him. He's a walking disaster, so do not get near him when he's getting serious in an actual fight. Hendrickson is taking Isolde away, but she tries to call out for Tristan. Tristan is staring at Meliodas fighting Arthur, and instead of taking his father's words into consideration and even getting away with everyone else, he flies towards the action, passing his father, trying to land a blow on Arthur with Meliodas telling him, Tristan to stay back, as Tristan just tells Meliodas to just stay quiet. Arthur comments, what a bad child, as he begins to block all of Tristan's blows seemingly effortlessly. Arthur even starts to try and scold Tristan a bit, saying, you really shouldn't speak to your kind old father like that, as he then tries to swing his sword to decapitate Tristan's head. But at the very last second, Meliodas manages to pull Tristan down to avoid that slash. And Meliodas tries to slash back with Lost Vein, with Arthur dodging that as well. And then we get Demon Mark Meliodas, as he then charges up a bunch of dark energy balls. And we then get a two-page spread of Meliodas using one of his most devastating attacks, the Trillion Dark, launching them towards Arthur. Now remember, this attack was used by Meliodas when he fought the Demon King in the Seven Deadly Sins, but this was in his mindscape. I don't think anyone has seen Meliodas use this move. Arthur has not seen Meliodas use this move to my knowledge, as he is surprised that the darkness is so dense that it can actually have mass. Meliodas then charges towards Arthur after he blocks the Trillion Dark and knocks Arthur back and he's standing right in front of Percival and Co. Percival tries to grasp his sword, but Nazians tells him quite well not to do it. Arthur is well beyond his power at this point. They need to pull back now. Meliodas is asking Tristan if he's okay, but Tristan's talking back to him saying like, who said you could help me? Meliodas tries to get Tristan to calm his mind and settle down, but Tristan is not having it, asking, am I hurt? I'm always fighting to the death. You can't treat me like a child forever. Meliodas just sighs and is like, I guess he can't change back, huh? Tristan begins to yell in sheer anger, telling Meliodas to shut up and that he can fight on his own without his, without Meliodas' power. As we then get a silhouette of Tristan, seemingly kind of exhausted to an extent, as this is Arthur speaking based off the dialogue. He says, you really are just a child. You understand nothing, nothing at all. In this battlefield, you're only dragging your father down. Arthur continues saying like, if you stayed out of the way, I would have been damaged far worse. So Arthur literally just said, if Tristan didn't get in the way, Meliodas could have actually done some real damage to Arthur, which shows just how strong Meliodas still is. Even against Arthur, even though he, Arthur isn't going like 100% right now because he has the power of chaos, I doubt he's going 100% at this moment, but he would actually have gotten hurt. So that is a huge feat in Meliodas' department, and just to show how far the four knights still have to go in order to reach Arthur and surpass the sins. But Arthur also states not only would Arthur would have been damaged a lot worse, but Meliodas wouldn't have been damaged at all. Tristan looks and is surprised at Meliodas, and turns out Arthur managed to graze his neck, which I can assume was at the moment when Meliodas tried to pull Tristan away from getting his head cut off after charging after Arthur, just not listening to anyone talking. But Meliodas writes it off as just, it's nothing to worry about. So yeah, classic Meliodas trying to play this off as nothing, but Meliodas, the same goes for you. So, he's, so now he's tr trying to lecture Meliodas as well, telling Meliodas that he really shouldn't be worrying about his son in a national affair. But Meliodas just snaps back saying, if I don't worry about my son, how can I be the king of a country? As Arthur just says, you're just unfit to be a king then. What do you think it is to be king of a country? So now we're getting like Arthur's ideals of being a leader and a king. As he states, what it means to be a king is resolve and action. In order to protect one's country and its people, one must cast their individuality and feelings aside. Even if it's your lovely wife and son, don't you think so? As Tristan is as in the background as Arthur is stating this, Tristan is just groaning in pain from his demon powers as Meliodas goes to try and calm him down. Meliodas tells, tells Arthur that he doesn't want to do this. He won't throw away his son or his wife or, or the people he cares about for the sake of his kingdom. 
he's gonna do everything he can to protect them all. We do get more of Arthur's mentality in this chapter, and I like it. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more right after we finish this chapter. Arthur states, I see as Tristan is starting to go a little crazy from his demon powers. Moses is asking, are you hurt? Just hang in there as he's holding on to Tristan, trying to keep them still. And as he's holding down Tristan, Arthur raises his sword and just says, then die protecting your beloved son. With the last panel of the chapter being Arthur seemingly swinging his sword, or getting ready to swing his sword towards Meliodas with his back turned, holding down his son. With the chapter ending and the next chapter being called Hyperion. That was an awesome chapter. Four Nights of the Apocalypse continues to get more and more epic despite some hiccups along the way, but everything since Arthur has shown up has been nothing but greatness. We're getting his ideals right here in this chapter, conflicting with Meliodas, seeing that Meliodas could actually damage Arthur to an extent if Tristan didn't get in the way, showing just how out of control and aggressive Tristan can be when his demon powers are being used for too long and he can't even turn it, turn it down or turn back to normal. And Arthur is just, I just find Arthur interesting, a lot more interesting with every single chapter. His ideal of resolve, of resolve and action shows that he wants to be the type of leader that sticks to his convictions no matter what. He wants to put away his feelings and his attachments for his ideals and for his kingdom. Which means it's very possible that Arthur still very much cares for Meliodas, and it shows in the dialogue proceeding. He's still relatively friendly towards Meliodas and even calls Meliodas kind. Hell, even thanking Meliodas for the advice he once gave him. So, which means... That Arthur, despite still having feelings of attachment towards the Sins and maybe some other people in Leonis, he's going to put all that aside, resolve himself, and do what he wants for his dream, for his goal of an everlasting kingdom for, the, for humankind. Which makes Arthur a lot... I could be reading too much into this, but this does make Arthur a lot more compelling in my eyes as well, instead of just a flat out, yeah, all the other race is bad, I'm just going to wipe all of, them, all of them out, I don't care about anyone anymore. If Arthur still cares about the people of his past, but he has to go against them for his resolves, it makes a hell of a lot of sense, and that goes to show his ideals and whole idea of being a king of a country. And Meliodas, he's classic shonen protagonist, I mean, now former shonen protagonist, wanting to protect everyone dear to him as well as his entire country. Now obviously Meliodas is the one that's more correct, but Arthur is willing to steal himself and just detach himself emotionally so he can go through with all this. And I'm very interested to see where this goes next, because people are saying, oh, Meliodas is going to die. Oh, wait, no, Meliodas is going to live. I don't think Meliodas is going to die just yet. Remember, I did a whole theory video when the Four Nights began about how the Seven Deadly Sins could die. I'll leave that in the title card above. I might make another video as an update based on how we've, stuff has gone with Arthur at this point, but I don't think Meliodas is going to die just yet. It's how these types of legacy series tend to go with previous protagonists dying so the future protagonists can live on. He's not going to die yet. It's still, still too early. This is the first fight Meliodas has had in this new series. I give him at least one, maybe two more fights tops as a mentor figure for the rest of the characters. But yeah, overall, very hype fight. I wish the rest of the chapter was action as well, but it was more than worth it to get more insight into Arthur's mental state and ideology as well as some stuff with Tristan and Meliodas. And just to show that Meliodas is still just as strong as he was in the past, as he is right now, and could potentially be even stronger, as he was only in his demon state for like two attacks. And Arthur still is not at 100%, so I can't wait to see Arthur going 100%. But yeah, this arc is really ramping up to its conclusion, as Lancelot is still the only Knight of the Apocalypse not on the scene, so I feel like things will wrap up when he shows up to calm down Tristan, and so Meliodas can focus on Arthur and maybe go towards a stalemate for the moment. But yeah, I give this arc maybe another, like, probably gonna end with in chapter 85. I give it, like, at, at max 10 chapters for this arc to finish this fight, get everyone together, and explain what the rest of the story is gonna be. Overall, I love this chapter, really great, and I can't wait for next, for next week. But what did you all think of this chapter? Leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. I love talking to you guys. There are some things that I always miss in chapters that just don't appear to me when I record. 
and when these are being edited. So I really appreciate talking to you guys and it helps me with future knowledge when I co cover new chapters and new topics. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really, really does help. As it shows you guys like the Fortnite's content on the channel and want me to keep it going. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you all have an awesome day.